Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's podcast. Um, my name is Martin, and I'm going to tell you all about my one night trip on an MSC cruise. That's right, I went for one night. Now, uh, here at Rock the Boat, we sell a lot of um, MSC cruises, uh, and pretty much everyone else has been on the MSC cruise, but I just hadn't been. So I decided, uh, as I'm based over in France, that I would take a one night cruise from La Havre all the way over to Southampton. Uh, to see what is available on board an MSC ship. It was the MSC Virtuoso. It's one of the newer ships. It's also one of the ones that goes out of Southampton uh, last as well. So it's lucky enough to be able to board in the half. Now, a couple of problems uh, happened, which was not MSC's fault. Um, on the day, it turns out it was a strike. And so that meant that they couldn't operate the uh, the trains to get up from Paris up to the half and also from people getting off the ship to come down to uh, to Paris to go for the day. So what they did was to change from Le Havre to Zeebrugge, so Bruges, uh, in Belgium. So a completely different country. Now, MSC were really good at this. Um, they basically contacted everyone that was getting on Le Havre um, and told them, go to Paris. We will pick you up from Paris. Don't worry about getting to Zeebrugge. We will pick you up from Paris and we will take you there. So it's great. Got on 8 o'clock in the morning. We had a little stop on the way. It was chatting to people on board. Nice kind of mix of people. Um, they got on, uh, taken straight to the ship and because it wasn't one of the main kind of embarkation sort of, uh, places, there's only about 40 people getting on board there uh, that day. Uh, it was really easy and slick to get on board. So really great. Uh, so first impressions, it is a big ship. It does hold a lot, a lot of people, a huge amount of guests on board, but it doesn't feel like it's a massive ship. Uh, it's. It, it is slightly wider than, say, uh, sort of the P&O kind of ones. If you've been on P&O Azura or Ventura, it, it is a bit wider than those kind of ships. Um, but that does mean they can fit in more space into the restaurants and things inside. But I never kind of felt like I was on a huge, what people sort of call one of those milk carting container ships, the big, big, get lost on board ship. Now, like most ships, they're pretty sort of standard layout. So top deck, through and pools. And that's also where you're going to find the buffet, generally at the back of the ship. Uh, and then the front of the ship, you kind of usually have like a bar and that kind of stuff. So sort of talk you through um, what uh, is available on the ship. So um, on board the ship, there's loads of entertainment. Now, um, the, the night that I was there, the entertainment in the main uh, theatre was um, a lady. She'd been on one of these um, singing TV shows uh, in the UK. And she was performing hits from Divas. She was really good. She could really sing. And she interacted really well with the audience. So I didn't get to see any of the big sort of production. Um, because it's actually the last night of the full seven night cruise that I was getting onto. So I didn't see those, unfortunately. But I did get to see her. And she was really good. The theatre was nice. Holds about 750 people, I think. You can book things like that on the app. Now, MSC, like a lot of other cruise lines nowadays, is very much heavy on using the app so it's going to tell you how your dinner is it's also in your cruise cards as well if you want to book any speciality restaurants if you want to book excursions um if you want to do pretty much anything uh to book to go and see for example the theater shows you can do this all on the app as well so um wi-fi is not included uh in uh, msc we'll get onto what's included in a minute but to be able to use the msc app that is included um as well so, what is included with an MSC cruise? So, you get all of your basic dining. So that's your main uh, dining restaurant and also the buffets are included. Uh, in the buffet, you can have things like there's the fruit juices uh, and the water. And then you've got the coffee that comes out of the machine uh, and tea and that kind of stuff. So, that is all included um, when you're on board. The Wi-Fi is included only to use the MSC. So if you want to go to the speciality restaurants, you can either buy a pack that gives you two, three, four, or you can just pay as you go. Or as you go to those, it is a bit cheaper to do the pack uh, in advance. Uh, Wi-Fi, I think Wi-Fi, I mean, Wi-Fi on cruise ships, if you pay for it, it's pretty expensive. Um, I did see people using it. The other thing to think about with the MSC is that it's a per device. Um, package as opposed to be able to share. So if you could want to use it on a phone and a tablet and a laptop, that's three different devices. So it's something to kind of think about uh, why should you go on board. 
It obviously depends on where you're going to. If you go in somewhere, uh, for example, this one was just going around sort of Northern Europe. So it was pretty much in a port every day. Do you need to have Wi-Fi at one o'clock in the morning? No. They were in port quite late as well. So you didn't really kind of need to have um, the Wi-Fi because you're going to be getting off the ship almost every single day. So if you're out and about, um, do you need Wi-Fi? Out of that. Okay. Drinks. So. As I said, the basic drinks are included at the buffet. If you want to have any other drinks, you then got to pay as you go or have one of the drinks packages. Now, personally, I think the drinks packages, if you do want to have more than a, a couple of drinks per day, it is worth getting a drinks package. So if you're a kid, then you can do the minors package uh, and that includes soft drink. And there is an adult version, a bit more expensive, but you can do the adult version and that includes all the soft drink. I had the easy package and what you'll find is that most of the um, restaurants and bars, you will see a menu that says included in the easy drinks package. So this is things like, the, uh, there were about seven euros for a drink. And this is things like a Moscow mule, a mojito, pina colada. So those kind of cocktails. So it's not the over extravagant one, but it is a really good base uh, that also includes Heineken and draft that also includes uh, tea and coffee and uh, hot chocolate that kind of stuff uh, as well and um, little basic kind of soft drinks okay you can buy the more expensive drink packages so these will give you any drinks up to euros and the top one the premium one gives you any drink up to 13 euros so if you want to have any of the fancier cocktails so if you want to have something that's not sort of like mimosa or a pina colada kind of drink, then you need to get the more expensive um, drinks package. Now, I said I had the easy one and I went through and tried lots of different drinks and it was available in pretty much most of the places um, that I went to. There was a couple of places you could speciality dining restaurants. It's not included there because they don't do those cocktails. So that's where you need to kind of look at it. Okay. So uh, what was really cool was actually in the buffet, um, most buffets are sort of like sleepy to it, that kind of thing. But there is actually a bar in the buffet. So either you can uh, attract the attention of one of the waiters and stuff, and they'll bring you over your drinks, uh, especially if you've got a drinks package. Or uh, you can just go out to the bar. So I just, when, well, when I did, I'd basically go up, go and have a get, uh, uh, order a drink, and then wander around and go and find somewhere to, to go and sit down. So that was really nice to kind of do. Okay. With MSC, they're pretty strict on what you can and can't bring on board the ship. So you cannot bring on board any alcohol or even soft drinks. So uh, the way I normally kind of do um, not having a drinks package is that I will bring along my little squash, my little concentrated squash, which is fine. That's okay. No one sort of check. That's pretty put on board. But you can't bring on things like bottles of water, big bottles of water. You can bring on a water bottle, an empty one, but you can't bring on bottles of water, same sort of bottles of coke things. Like if you've got like one in your hand, like well, the um, half liter one, 50 cent liter one, obviously finish it off, but you can't be bringing on six packs of one and a half liter bottles. You can't bring those on board. They won't let you basically. So um, you can drink the water from the, um, uh, in the cabin if you want to. Uh, it is uh, purified, so you can do that. Um, there are signs up in the buffet ask you not to refill water bottles um, with either the water that's there or the fruit juices and things like that. So my personal thing is go for a drinks package if you're going to have more than sort of four or five drinks, especially if you're going to go somewhere hot. If you're going to be sort of sailing around the Mediterranean, you're probably even going to get through that in soft drink. And you think sort of like a Coke is going to be about €3.50 and then you'd be paying about £29 for a day to have the easy package. That's the one that's got the... Um, alcohol included uh, there are more expensive uh, drinks packages if you want to but if you're like me uh, and you just want to have a heineken's fine or you want to have sort of house wine uh, and the basic cocktails that is absolutely fine i have quite a lot of soft drinks as well uh, whilst on board my personal recommendation is if you're going to have more than sort of four or five drinks per day not necessarily alcoholic drinks then it's probably worth getting that uh drinks okay food now Food can be one of the things that MSC either does really well or not so well. So 
let's start off with a, with what I personally, from my one night experience, so I can't sort of uh, judge the entire fleet, but also from the feedback from people and also uh, from my own personal experience, the dining in the main dining room, that's the one that's printed on your cruise card that you have, I have early or late dining, was not great, to be perfectly honest. Fine. It just wasn't particularly good. I had um, a salad. It was a lot of lettuce leaves covered in a sauce and uh, some, some mozzarella. They do make their own mozzarella on board. So that's really pretty cool. And I think there's some cherry tomatoes sort of thrown in there as well. Um, that was that. And then I had a steak. The steak was really chewy, though. It wasn't particularly great today. Um, it kind of did leave quite a lot of it. I, I had been to the buffet beforehand, so I wasn't particularly hungry. I went to the main dining just to go and see what it was like. And then for dessert, uh, I just had ice cream and it was just ice cream. It was kind of nice. It was actually ice cream. Speaking to some other people up in the buffet, uh, I said, how can we drop in the buffet and not at the main dining? And they said they'd been to the main dining a couple of times. Didn't really like it, preferred the buffet. So main dining, not so great. On the other hand, buffet was really, really good. So you kind of have this kind of halfway thing of main dining being mm, great, but the buffet being really, really good. So like sort of most ship buffet area, different stations that you can go around to and you will find lots and lots of different food. Um, because the, the staff and the crew that work on board are international, you're going to get things like, I was really lucky, the, 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 the chef that was cooking uh, the curry that night was Indian. Um, and, um, they made really, really good curry. Um, I said, I live in France. We don't get curry that much over here. They can't really sort of handle spices, a huge amount, but, um, they had really, really nice, uh, curry. They had like the chapatis to go with it. They had uh, the, the, the popper doms, all the other kind of little things, um, to go with, uh, it as well to make it a really, uh, good thing. Because if you ever see, it's a very mixed bag of people that's on board. So if you've been on things like P&O, for example, it's probably 95% people on board are going to be living in the UK. Whereas on MSC, even though the ship went out, predominantly went out of uh, Southampton, which most people got on, on board, um, I would say, you know, British people were probably the ma slight majority, but there were people from all over the world that were there. So the MSC needed to cater to lots of different uh, people there was a lot of people from china for example that had gone on board um because it's an easy way for them to go around europe and go and sort of see some places and then get back to london from southampton a lot of people obviously italians because it's an italian cruise like some french people on board belgium lots of different nationalities so they, they obviously have to cater to different things now obviously it's italian ships so they are actually really good at pizza and pasta they have proper pizza ovens on board and you see them rolling it out and it's it was really, really good pizza. I was really impressed with the pizza that was on board. They actually make the mozzarella on board the ship as well. And you can see them where they actually make it. It's the first thing you come to when you get into the uh, into the buffet. Really cool. Uh, pasta, really good as well. Um, salads, kind of basic kind of stuff you would get in salad. Um, they had um, uh, a Mexican station that uh, at time as well when I went for, for lunch. So that was really cool that you can have like chili and your uh, tacos and burritos and that kind of stuff that was nice um desserts desserts tend to be the more sort of european sort of stuff the little square but it's like a big kind of soft cake kind of thing with a lot of art with a lot of cream on top and it's cut into squares you get that fruit as well um no ice cream in the in the buffet um, but overall, the buffet was really, really good. Went there in the morning for breakfast. Breakfast was really good as well. And it is a big size buffet, um, bigger than what you're going to get on, sort of like, say, for example, P&O ships, the Disney ships. Um, it's a bigger uh, buffet. So it means that they can close down one side and then the other side open. Uh, the opening times are really good in it as well. Um, so you kind of you could just pop in there and get a snack um, uh, as well. So I went back and had some extra pizza later on as well uh to to, uh, to go with my my drink that i just uh, got from there okay so the dining uh, i did get to do any speciality restaurants but it is something else you can do whilst you're on board now one of the things that msc is really well known for is family entertainment so when i went on board i was lucky enough to go and have a look around all the kids facilities uh so on virtuoso when you walk into the, it's on two levels 
and it's a massive family area. Uh, right in the center of that is a two-level sport arena. So it's like a sports hall where they've got uh, basketball hoops, they've got the goals for the, to play football. I saw some teens doing zorbing whilst they were there. There's tons of stuff for them to do. There's an arcade as well. Things like the arcade is paid for. So they have a bowling alley. They have a, a Formula One um, simulator. Um, there's a virtual reality headset and you can buy a fun pass. You can have a pay as you go with it or you can buy a fun pass. Uh, basically means that you can, it's cheaper per time you go onto it. So I can't play video games. So I didn't actually go do any of the video games. So I can't sort of comment on that. Uh, the kids clubs itself, they have a great partnership with Lego. So they have like these Lego models, uh, around the kids club. Um, and there are tons of things to do. The great thing is that they, you know, all the staff are trained and they can all speak English. Um, so anyone from English speaking background will be able, the kids will be able to go and have fun. Plus the kid, uh, sorry, the kid club uh, team can also speak quite a few other languages as well. There's always going to be someone who's very Italian, some other ones as well. So um, don't kind of think that your kids are going to be in there and no one's going to be able to speak to the kids because all the, everyone's going to speak Italian. They can speak English, don't worry about that. There's plenty of things for them to do as well. They, I said it was on two different levels. There's uh, different things for the different age groups. Um, there was a place called the Attic, which was kind of at the back. And what was kind of cool about this was that on the one side of the attic, uh, there was a bar. So the adults can go and sit outside whilst the teenagers are in the kids bit. And they've got their own bar as well. And obviously it's only soap and soft drinks. But at night, uh, after the teenagers things have closed, it was about 11 o'clock. That area is closed to the teenagers and it opens up to a nightclub for everyone. So that was kind of quite cool as well. So it's a nice sort of area uh, to go into. Um, pools on board. Now, they have the normal, as on pretty much every single ship on the top deck, you have your rectangular pool, which is right in the center, and there's a massive screen above. It's on pretty much every single ship you go on to nowadays. That's what you're going to get. Okay. Um, they have at the back of the ship, you've got the, uh, the aqua park. Really cool. I mean, it was cold, so I didn't see, actually see anyone going out into the outdoor pool. Or, or actually, I did see someone in the outdoor pool. Uh, but didn't see anyone on the on the aqua park. If there is um, quite a few slides uh, that are on there um, at the aqua park at the back of the ship, it's got right, right, right up on the top deck where all the funnels and things are. Uh, it's like jungle themed. And then they also have like a ropes course up there as well. So, uh, but again, because the weather was a bit gray and miserable, no one was out doing that. So I did get to find out um, the sort of times and things for that. Now, what was really good is uh, they had a really good indoor pool. Now, most indoor pools uh, on cruise ships are tiny, or you have to go into the spa area to use them. This one was a massive uh, two or three story uh, enclosed area. I think that they can actually roll back the, uh, because it, it's like a um, glass panels on top. I think looking at it, when I had a little walk around, I think that they actually roll and they can um, take them away uh, to make it an outdoor pool. But that time they so it's a really nice heated indoor pool quite a sort of big indoor pool and then you've got the spa pools the security ones on either side plus there's a bar in there as well it's actually where i got my first drink from when i got on board because you're indoors it's nice and warm and you're next to the pool everyone's chilling out and black it doesn't matter what the weather is outside you can chill out and relax and there was upper level so you can go up there if you just want to so for example the kids are in the pool but you don't want to get in the pool you can go and sit up there read a book, go and get a drink. Uh, there was some table tennis up there, the table football. Really great area. I was really impressed with the indoor uh, swimming pool and ball virtue also. Okay. So, other entertainment, there are some theatre shows on boards uh, as well. I said, I didn't get a chance to go into those, unfortunately. Uh, but the feedback I heard was it was really good. I got to go and see the theatres, got to go and see the one at the front of the ship and one at the back of the ship, and they all were really cool. There is a casino on board, um, as you kind of find on promotions ships apart from Disney. So uh, you can go and uh, gamble and spend all your money uh, away. The uh, uh, the kind of heart of the ship is they've got this um, this uh, it's a massive LED screen, it's really long but like, curved uh, LED screen that's above uh, where the roof is. You're kind of walking the life walking down an Italian street. I know this sounds weird on the cruise ship. And then above, obviously, they can 
project things like um, cloud and that kind of stuff, or they were doing um, Vivaldi, uh, the for, uh, uh, Four Seasons, uh, as they were kind of making like sort of patterns and stuff like that up there as well. Really kind of cool. And then off of that, that's where you're going to be able to find a lot of the shops, some of the speciality dining, uh, a couple of bars as well. And there was a chocolate making place. It was really good. Just go and have a look at the chocolate and what they can make out of chocolate. It's a bit like that um, Cake Boss um, show. It was really kind of cool to go and have a look at uh, uh, at that. Uh, and then it's pretty much next to the theatre as well. So it's a really cool area. There is the the robot that makes drinks and things. Uh, I kind of think it's, I think it's been on other cruise ships before. And it's a bit of a gimmick and things. Like that. About 14 euros um, for a drink. But champagne bar as well. But just be careful if you are on the easy drinks package to make sure that the bar you go into accepts the easy drink package um, because not all of them do. So just make sure um, you do that. Otherwise, you'll be charged for it and you go back. Be charged back to your cabin. Speaking of our cabins, I had a uh, single person cabin. So um, my cabin was just for one person. It was basically a sofa that turned into a uh, a, a bed. So not the most comfortable uh, uh, of, uh, of of beds. I was right at the back of the ship, which was really cool. I had a nice balcony, and if we you know, had good views, <laughs> not of the stuff uh, of the port of, uh, of Bruges, then it would be kind of, and if the weather was nice, if we just could have sat out there, gone and got a drink and sat outside uh, on the back. Cabins are all um, sort of quite nice, got sort of standard sort of sized cabins now. The reason that they have these sort of solar ones is one for solar people like me who are traveling on my own, but also if you're family and then because uh, it had an interconnecting door. So the cabin next to me could have been interconnecting into mine. So if you had kids, for example, older kids, you could then sort of put one of them in there uh, and then it kind of like puts them off to one side. So if you've got it's you and then a teenager, well, give them a teenager off to one side, put them in their own uh, sort of single cabin. But then you've also got the internet connecting one as well. So what are the good points about MSC? One, really good value for money. When you kind of look at the prices, if you're booking early, they offer some really, really great value um, trips. They do a lot out of Southampton. So for example, if it's your first cruise and you just want to go and try it out, then maybe you can do like a two or three night little cruise uh, just to go and try it out, see what you think about cruising. Uh, or for sort of longer ones, and again, you can kind of go Norwegian Fjords, you can go to uh, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, those kind of places. Uh, so there's a lot of places you can go to from Southampton. Uh, or you can, uh, a lot of cruise lines, you can go out of Barcelona, Rome, the Italian cruise line, uh, quite a lot of uh, Italian stuff, and then uh, the Caribbean as well. So great choice of different ports that you can get onto, uh, really good um, ships, very modern um, ships as well. Uh, okay. Plus sign uh, um, is uh, if you have to pay for a drinks package, um, pretty fairly priced compared to some of the other ones. Uh, so it's about twenty nine pounds uh, for an adult uh, per day to have the easy package. And when you compare that to sort of prices that you pay on Royal Caribbean, it's pretty expensive. Um, but then if you compare that to sort of uh, Norwegian Cruise Line NTLs um, free to see, where you just pay, for example, no, it's £150 for the whole trip, and that includes the drinks package and a couple of other things as well. Okay. Uh, Wi-Fi, that's a downside because you pay for it, and some cruise lines are included here for free now. Uh, so, for example, Disney don't include that you can actually do much on it, but things like Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp, um, you can use that for free uh, on Disney. Uh, and Virgin Voyages, the internet's free um, unless you want to do streaming, whereas with MSC, pay for it. So just think about where you're going to be, whether you need to pay for it on top as well. Um, so the downside would be the main dining restaurant, just from my one night experience and from the feedback I've had from other people as well. So think about either doing the speciality restaurants or spending more time at the buffet. Okay. If you've never done a cruise before, think of it as probably like um, a good four and a half star uh, Brazil in somewhere like Sharm El Sheikh or Turkey that floats around and you get to go to lots of different places. That's kind of the kind of vibe that I got from it. And that's the overall impression that, that, that I got. Also, price wise, probably not too dissimilar as well. So if you have any questions about MSC cruises, 
please get in contact with one of us and we'll be really happy to help you set sail with MSC. Thanks very much for listening and have a wonderful day.